Why? Because Swift is over with. Swift is done. We on location. I remember way back. You ain't have no swag. You did a little research. Now you got a moon bag. Now you got a new walk. Now you got new swag. You did a little research. Now you got a moon bag. Well, let me show you what the moon bag's like. You take them gains when it gets that high. I mean, the market may dip for a little bit. That's when I hurry up and buy me. I just wanna rub them thighs. I like my oatmeal chunky. But that enough's all in it. Shit, you're talking about the blockchain monkeys. It's a solo nation. CMOS has over 92 minerals that the body needs. Okay? Now, got my immune system in check. But now, when it comes to crypto, we're talking about cold storage. Get your crypto off the exchange and into a cold storage wallet to where only you have access. Okay, decent wallet link in the description. Now, what is going on blockchain monkeys? Eagle here and I wanna thank you for coming to my jungle. But first of all, I'm no financial advisor whatsoever. No, I'm a professional in blockchain technology, but there is one thing that I absolutely will do. And that's give you my opinion. So today we have got to go back in on XLM, Stellar. What are they doing over there? What is Danelle Dixon and the squad doing over there? So much happening, okay? And we got a clip of Tori Samples where she shows the work that she has done and where it's brought Stellar to today. And Tom Emmer. He's about to break it down for you. Before we can even get started, I'm gonna need you to rub those hands together. Rub it vigorously and slide down Twitter. And so looking at Stellar.org, we have here founder series, Tori Samples, co-founder of Leaf Global FinTech. Now this is, uh, I believe, yeah, March 8th, so very recent. And coming in hot from Caroline Young, okay, we have here coincidentally, the first founder stories is coming out on International Women's Day. This is the third IWD I've spent at SDF. And I've known the subject of this interview. Tori samples for around that long as well. At the time of this conversation, she served as co-founder and chief technology officer of Leaf Global Fintech, a digital wallet services provider for people crossing borders built on Stellar. Since its acquisition by IDT Corporation, Leaf Global has now evolved into Boss Money Africa, equipped with even more capabilities than ever to connect its users to necessary financial services. And much to my surprise, and delight months later, SDF announced that Tori would be joining our newest senior project manager. Funny story, this opportunity was unexpectedly born the day we had this conversation. And so her initial focus area was a project that would later morph into Stellar 8 Assist, a tool powered by Stellar Disbursement Platform that can be used by humanitarian aid organizations to quickly and cheaply disperse bulk payments to recipients like refugees and migrants. And so a huge shout out to Tori Samples and all the work she's done. <laughs> so I think any entrepreneur can look back and identify 10 to 20 pivotal moments that led them to where they are because it is a mixture of skill and luck and timing. And, and so there are always moments that kind of shape your trajectory. But I think for me, there were some very early ones that made pursuing me possible. My name is Tori Samples, and I am the co-founder and CTO of Leaf Global Fintech, which was recently acquired by IDT. Leaf is a provider of digital wallet services to people crossing borders, mostly in East Africa. We are live in three countries today with a smartphone version and a non-smartphone version, and it's all built on Stellar behind the scenes. One of the things that we're really excited about with Leaf is meeting people along the way at every piece of their financial journey. So we started with a cross-border wallet that helped refugees, migrants, and speakers to bring their money to the borders and take them back. But we know that that's not the end of people's financial journeys. Once they get to the place, they want to start a business or send money to friends and family across the region or improve their financial literacy. So we're helping them to do that. The things that is great about being part of a larger parent company with IoT is that they already have a broad base in fintech and telecommunications technology from 30 years of experience. So we're leveraging that. We are hoping to bring the two companies together technically and integrate so that people can use IoT's tools to send money into leaf wallets across the world. And then once the money is in their leaf wallet, be able to do a wide range of things with that money in order to improve their lives wherever they are. Okay, so this coming in about 18 hours ago, this is from the GOP Financial Services hearing entitled, Coincidence or Coordinated, the Administration's Attack on Digital Assets. Take a look. 
Uh, first, in your view, is the administration's regulatory posture towards digital assets encouraging or discouraging financial institutions from offering services to digital asset firms? Discouraging. In your view, is the administration's regulatory posture towards digital assets encouraging or discouraging financial institutions from innovating themselves and offering digital asset products and services to their clients? Discouraging. Is it? They can't stop us. Concerns innovation and consumers. What is the potential impact of the administration's negative, wide-ranging statements on safety and soundness uh, with financial institutions engaging in digital asset activities? One possible consequence is that it drives it into less visible areas of our economy where we can't monitor it, can't manage the risks associated with it. Another possible uh, uh, outcome is that it increases the technology gap between um, the larger banks, uh, which uh, continue to invest and expand in technology versus the smaller banks, which frankly don't have the same resources and aren't able to pursue uh, as aggressively investments in technology. Can you please give us an example of when an administration has taken this type of regulatory posture toward an industry in the past, and what the effects were? Many people have suggested that it's similar to what happened with Operation Choke Point, uh, but there are important differences. Uh, number one is that what the administration is doing currently is transparent, um, at, at least to the extent you can do that within the confidential supervisory system. They've been very clear to their credit what their, what their views are and what their concerns are. Uh, no, number two, though, I think it's different from Operation Choke Point in the sense that, as I understood Choke Point, it was more focused on um, uh, discouraging banks from banking in certain industry sectors. Uh, this is actually broader than that because this also applies to essentially discourage existing banks from exploring new technologies, including digital assets. Thank you. This administration's attempt to debank the crypto community and prevent financial institutions from offering digital asset products and services to customers is a lazy and destructive regular Lazy than a mother strategy that is already chilling innovation and subjecting users of digital assets to less sophisticated jurisdictions. They can't help it, ladies and gentlemen. We coming. And so coming back over here to Stellar.org, we have here Stellar's vision for an interoperable future. How many times have I been telling you, ladies and gentlemen? It has to. And so we have here Stellar is different. Built between Bitcoin and Ethereum, Bitcoin 2009, Stellar 2014. Stellar was designed with a unique goal in mind to facilitate low cost transfers of all forms of value anywhere in the world. The network possesses built-in features that permit creating, sending, receiving, and trading digital representations of any type of asset. Are you getting this? This is how Stellar helps large international companies, small startups, and individual developers access new markets and helps those marginalized by the traditional financial system find financial inclusion. The guiding principle is interoperability. Stellar is built to interoperate with traditional financial institutions, different types of assets, and web and layer two blockchain applications. So let's dig in here to see how that's so. You have here interoperability is facilitated between these services via APIs. APIs allow two pieces of software to communicate with each other and allow the company which create them to impose its standards on other companies trying to plug into its technology. However, there are no standards for APIs themselves. That means that the API for one company's messaging app, despite performing the exact same function, might share nothing in common with the API for a different app. In short, with each company implementing their own APIs, users of these APIs must treat each other as its own unique product and project. In other words, the opposite of interoperability. So do you see what Stellar is providing? What, the, what they're allowing, the cohesion that they're bringing together. Take a look at this. Blockchain can create immense opportunities, but only if all possibilities are explored. In the blockchain industry, many people believe this means coordinating and cooperating with other chains, creating bridges, building in public, and investing in other blockchain projects. This is true, but it's only one part of the story. Stellar is built for easy connectivity with on and off ramps to fiat currency. That allows companies like MoneyGram International to help users convert physical cash into digital assets and back again around the world or Finclusive to provide fintech businesses access to stable coins in a compliant manner. These bridge companies are called anchors and plug into Stellar to connect the network 
to the traditional financial system. Stellar is also well suited for application level interoperability and asset interoperability. It was built so that anyone can issue their own asset on the network. Recently made a lot easier with the release of Stellar Asset Sandbox. Ladies and gentlemen, how many licks does it take to get to the center of a tootsie? Cause it's the standard in this bitch. SRP! I, I went to YouTube University. And now they mocking us. With no degree. We, we say about a swift. Keep it walking. We smoking elders in these bushes. Bitcoin is talking. You don't have to be rich to be taking uh, advantage of this. This was the beginning of the greatest transformation of wealth the world has ever fucking seen since World War II. Blockchain. Blockchain. We talking about an intellectual choo-choo train. It's the LT up in these streets, man. That's why we rip all on that blockchain. Blockchain.